Now, here's something we've all wondered about. I've wondered about it, so I'm not pointing my finger at you. This is universal. This isn't a Christian thing or a religious thing. This is just a human thing. Why would a good God allow bad things to happen? This is a universal question. And for some of you, this question, or when you began to wrestle with this question, it marked the end or the beginning of the end of faith for you. That this question or some version of it may have undermined faith completely. In fact, you, your faith may be right now gradually sl dying a slow death around something that's happened in the world or something that's happened to somebody you love or just something that's happened in general and you just can't reconcile good God and bad things and so consequently, you're watching your faith slowly die or maybe the faith of someone that you love or maybe it died a long time ago because of some version of this question. But the interesting thing about this question is when we ask it, and we've all asked it, I've asked it. When we ask this question, <laughs> let's just be honest, we, when we think about the bad things in the world, isn't it true that we're focused on the bad out there and not the bad in here? So, so let me ask a kind of a follow-up question. Have you, don't, don't raise your hand, have you ever done anything bad? Yeah, and don't, really don't raise your hand on this one. Have you ever wanted to do something really, really, really bad, but you knew you'd get caught and the only reason you didn't express your badness and your evil is because you did not want to go to prison. But if you thought you could get by with it, you might have done it anyway. Don't, again, don't raise your hand, right. Um, and, and I'm guilty of that as well. But it's so interesting that when people begin to wrestle with the existence of a good God as it relates to evil, it's always the evil out there. It's never the evil in here. In other words, I've never heard anybody make this case. Maybe, maybe you have. How could a good God allow me to happen? And then we go like this, but wait, no, no, no. I'm not talking about my version of bad or the evil I might do. I'm talking about the big bad things. But once you begin to look at the big, big bad things as opposed to the little bad things in your heart or the things that you've done, you have changed the subject and you've changed the question and suddenly you're in the world of how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. And this way of thinking, and I don't wanna, we can't cover all the bases today, but I just wanna just drop this in because it points to where we're going today. This way of thinking ultimately leads to what's called an unfalsifiable premise which actually makes the argument meaningless. Because if you chase it down to its logical extreme, and I understand it's so emotional, we never get to the logical extreme because it's just an emotional question. But when you get to the end of the question, here's what you end up with. I don't believe, I don't believe God exists because I exist. The only way, that's why it's unfalsifiable. The, the only way you could convince me there is a good God is for me to no longer exist, but then I wouldn't be around for God to convince me. But again, it's so emotional, I don't think me saying that makes it go away. But I think if John were here, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, who wrote the fourth gospel, John, who followed around Jesus around, John, who saw everything Jesus did and heard everything Jesus taught, I think if, I think if John were to show up, John would say, wait, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, because I, John, he would say, I saw something that might help you with that dilemma. I saw God in a body coexist with evil men, evil men, and when I say evil, I mean evil like you can barely even imagine evil. And the God that I saw in a body did not prove that he was God by eliminating all evil. He did something else. The God in a body that I saw did not eliminate evil. He actually, and he didn't even eliminate the evil in me. He loved me. And then he went to work eliminating the evil in me. John, who spent time with Jesus, would say, I know it's a big emotional thing. I know it's a big emotional question. I'm not sure I can sort it out for you. All I can tell you is this. I saw God and I saw evil. I saw good God and I saw evil. And they can coexist, but it's nothing like you might imagine. Because God, don't miss this part, had come to dwell alongside evil. And God had come to dwell alongside evil men and women. And the light was so bright. And for some, they were attracted. And for others, they were, were repulsed. Later, John would say it this way, the light has come into the world, but some people, they just loved the darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil, but God didn't eliminate the evil. John says, no, the story didn't go like that. He actually placed it on the shoulders of his son so that you would not 
perish, but have eternal life, even though you're evil.